Hi everyone, Mary Nespresso Press Design. Thank you for joining me today, October 17th, 2024. Today we're going to make some tags and I'm calling them luggage tags. I was going to call them coin collector tags, but after I finished, I changed my mind <laughs> and realized I really didn't need to do an extra step. But I'm going to show you both. And what we're going to do is begin using up these papers in these um, paper pads with the, um, you know, the thinner paper, which if I don't start using them, I won't be able to buy any more. So things like this, and you can also make these with any digitals, but I'm going to flip through here and show you some types of paper that would be that would work for this particular tag design. But first, let me show you the tags. Okay, here they are, and they have a back. I really love them because from one sheet of paper, I got all these different little tags but they still all go together because they are from the same paper pad. And then I used some of the little cut aparts to make my little insert there. And then I used more of the scraps to make my reinforcements. And this was originally going to be another circle punch project, but then it kind of evolved. <laughs> I saw I got inspired by a tag, and um, then it just kind of took another direction. So here's some other ones made with digitals. And then I just kind of stuck with the number theme and um, kept them similar. But these are made with digitals. I just wanted to take a sheet and see what would happen. So what you're going to need is an eight by 12 piece. And the most important thing is that when just going to do it this way. When you fold it over, the two sides are different because the tag that inspired me had a little tab and I didn't want to add a tab. <laughs> so I just came up with a way to make it look like it has a faux tab and that's that's how I came up with it. So um, again, that's the most important thing. And I cut this down to 8 by 12. And I have a 4 inch left over. And I'm going to show you how to score. And I already chose another one and cut it. So let me just go through here quickly and show you some examples of pages that will work and pages that won't work. Here's another digital I have ready to cut. So um, something like this would work. That wouldn't work. Something like this might work because you have two different sides there. Um, that wouldn't work. Of course, that wouldn't work. Um, I already used this one. 
Love that. This might work. It's a little sparse, but it still might work. Um, this would probably work because when you fold it over, this is different than this. Uh, let's see. Of course, all these same patterns will not work because you want that top. This might work, even though it's a little sparse. Um, this might work because this is different than this. So, I'm going to use another piece of this to stick with the numbers theme. Then I have another one example here of one that seems like it would work, but probably won't if I can find it. I was going to do that one. That one would work. And if I skipped it accidentally, it was one of those ones that had something on this side, but not this side. And that probably wouldn't work. I'm going to say probably, but yeah, something like this probably wouldn't work because by the time you folded it, all you would get would be this part. So, let me just get to this final one here, which I'm, this I would use because I'd probably never use these for anything else. You can use your cut up. This might work, although this area is a little too similar. And then this one I'm using is way back at the end. <laughs> way back. Okay, there we go. This is the one I'm going to be using today. Although I'm going to score on a different one for you. Okay, so let's use these up. And I have a 4 inch piece, 4 by 12 left over from the ones I used. And another 4 by 12 so you'll need a scoreboard or you can just fold if you want because it's only two folds and uh, some glue paper punch if you want to make them like a coin collector which I'm going to show you And I think I'm going to go try to make sure your text is going to remain um, vertical and not horizontal if you have a, if you choose a piece with text. So we're just going to score at one inch. We're on our eight inch side. So we have an eight by 12 and this will work with any eight inch uh, width. Okay, so the final, the final tag is two by three and a half. But you can, I will get six tags out of this 12 inch piece of paper. So we score at one and we score at four and a half. I'm going to score on both sides because 
this paper. Didn't want to fold correctly. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the scoring. One and four and a half on the eight inch side. And then we're just going to fold. And get our top flap there. And then you're going to end up with something like that. And make sure everything's nice and even. And then you're going to put this in your trimmer and you're going to cut every two inches. So you end up with six tags. And I'll just cut one for you. And so you can see my tops, my top tab is different from the bottom. So I get that delineation there. And that's what makes it look like a cute little tag. A cute little luggage tag. I mean, I know officially it doesn't have a place for your name in that, but that's what I'm calling it because that's what it reminded me of. So there I am at two. And I just do that five more times and I have six little tags. Okay, so let me get my digital here. I can find it again and then I'm going to show you how you can make this a coin collector tag which was idea number one so here's a digital I just made sure my text was vertical my top is different this flap is different than what's underneath it going to cut that at two inches I'll, I'll do them all here see how many I get out of this sheet I forget how wide it was oh I think it was eight by eight yeah it was eight by eight so I got four I got four out of a digital and then I took my one inch circle punch which is EK success I know not everyone has this but it just went in there perfectly, went up to the flap, and then I punched out my hole. And there's a little coin collector tag. And then I had my, um, you know, I had my cut aparts. And I put one in the front. Or my little one and a half inch circles and one in the back. Okay. And that's how I um, that's how I did these ones. Like so. Okay, so you can do it either way, but then it occurred to me, I didn't have to cut a circle, I could have just popped a circle on the front of there and glued it down and pretty much got the same effect. 
so that's why I moved on. So I have my six already cut here, and we're just going to um, decorate these, get them glued up, get our corners done, and here they are. The paper I showed you with the owl. That one looks a little odd, but that's fine. We can fix it. I'm just going to cut off this part and I'm going to use all of these to decorate today. And then I even did my um, my little reinforcers from those scraps. Let me show you here. <laughs> I've even cut out my little reinforcers from this leftover wherever I could fit one. And that's part of what makes them look very um, pattern rich, which I love, which I personally love. So I'm just going to cut these apart, figure out which one is going to go where, and uh, I'm already pretty sure I'm going to put that 24 on that owl to hide that little part there. And that's what we're going to do. And then I don't know how I'm going to come up with reinforcers today, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So, and okay, I forgot to show you what else you could use if you want to go with the number theme as well. But you can um, decorate yours however you want, of course. Okay. Let me just show you that. I have these letters that have been sitting around forever. I have stickers. I have stencils. Um, here's another stencil that might be appropriate. I have this stencil that I used for these ones with my metallic pen from metallic marker from Dollar Tree which wasn't so great and then I tried a metallic or no uh, what is it metallic brush marker that didn't turn out very well so I went over it with the copper this says number four, and this says number two. So I used this stencil. Um, I have some rub-ons that might work. And I have some gold rub-ons, which probably would have looked lovely on here. So Anything like that, if you want to stick with numbers like I am, because I thought, well, luggage tags have a name and probably a number, so let's just stick with that. Let me decide which ones. Where's my hand? I know I want that on the owl. So rather than just poke a hole in the middle and do it like the first ones, I'm just going to decorate these. And then we'll cut our corner. 
Um, I think uh, that one there. It's too green. I think a little contrast would be good there, maybe. And Maybe like that. Let's see. Let's do this one here. And then One of these two here. Um, okay. Okay. I think that'll. I don't want to cut off the owl's eyes. Okay. Um, I think I might cut that down a little bit. See if I can use it somewhere else. Uh, maybe not. Let's just keep it simple. Okay. So, uh, I guess I'm just going to use purple. Did I say you need a glue stick? Oh, and another thing. Sorry, I interrupted myself. Just make a little template. Like these are always two by eight. And then you're going to um, score at one and four and a half, and they're two inches wide. So if you make a little template, or even something like this, then when you want to figure out how things are might fold you can just put it on your paper and then you say oh okay I want I'd rather flip my paper so that what I want is on the flap and what I want is on the base so to speak that might help you if you want to just keep a little template so you can make these in the future. So I'm going to glue them up first. Very simple. Do doesn't take a lot. Oh, and another thing. Why do you have a lump? Another thing. Um, these would look probably very cute if you did made a master board as long as you were paying attention to where your text is if you did a master board it would be very cute so I'm just going to get these glued up here should get a magazine why is this glue drying out? 
it goes from too gloopy to too dry. Maybe it's empty. Oh, that's the problem. I'm scraping the bottom. Jeez, that, that was fast. <laughs> that's why I'm getting that weird feeling. Okay. There's one. Get a different glue here. So, my husband went to get a thermostat this morning. The furnace guy still hasn't called back. Apparently he's not going to. We called his, um, the, his standby. His number was disconnected. He probably already made his first million. So he's retired. <laughs> so now we're on our, I don't know, third. See if he calls back today. But in the meantime, my husband said, well, I'm just going to try to fix this myself and see if the um, the only problem is the thermostat. But it still feels like an oven down here and we're still turning off the furnace at night because I don't want to burn it out in my sleep. Makes me too paranoid. I can't can't sleep with the furnace problem. That's going to need a little trim now that I glued that. It's a tiny bit too long, although I could have folded it under or wrap it around. That's another idea. If you want to wrap around so you have something on the back. Whoops. Why did you quit sticking? Because I'm using repositionable glue. Still didn't order my new glue. So I don't know. I think maybe Unless I do this one more time as a coin tag, a coin collector tag. I think the circle punch ideas are coming to an end. Maybe. We'll see. You know how it goes. You think you're finished and then all of a sudden another idea pops up and that should have I'm just going to tuck that under so we don't have to trim it and do the back I wonder how long it would... I'll just do a couple reinforcers so you can see probably... oh this is not good don't want to... I want you to stick how long do you allow re, uh, how long do you allow repositioning before you get dry? <clears throat> so you can see these go pretty fast. And then you have a um, set of six little tags. And of course you could do this with any single-sided paper, but this is the thinner kind. 
but I have, oh, I forget how many of these paper pads. Never use them, and it's time to start coming up with some ideas to use them. Okay, number five. And then I chose my tag corner punch, but of course just do a tag corner with your little template or whatever if you're good at cutting corners. Which that's another another little invaluable tool for me. Because I use that for a lot of things. Okay. <clears throat> Six little. <clears throat> there goes the voice. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Still have stuff draining down my throat from this cold. Okay, there we go. Six little, six more little luggage tags. Let me get my tag corner here. Get a drink of coffee. Cold, of course. Other than that, just the usual chaos around here. See, that's a, I created a little tab top just using paper. Because the other tag top, the inspiration had it, not a tag top, a tab top. <laughs> the other, um, the inspiration paper had a tab. The inspiration tag had a tab, and I didn't want to have to glue on a tab, even though I love tabs. I just thought I'm going to come up with a fast way to do that. Maybe I made something like this similar before. I'm not sure. But even if I did, this is better because I just love the way the um, scrapbook paper ends up kind of like surprise cuts. So I love the first ones. And I do like this paper pad. It is Design Cuts with a View. I almost bought a new paper pad. So there we go. There's our new set of luggage tags. And they're all different. I love that. So then I just took one. Made my little used it for a template, took a little white pen, put my space for my punch, Because I wanted, you know, I wanted to make sure these were all the same. Normally I would just punch. But I wanted to make sure I had a perfect set. So 
So I took the extra step. And then just just make one of these and keep it in your stash and or just do what I did. You know, I wrote everything in there and then I'm just going to keep it. Okay, standard paper punch. Oh, and you're still coming loose. How many hours does it take to dry that glue? Okay, there's my little holes. And that glue isn't dry, otherwise my punch would be punching perfect holes. I've had this punch probably, I don't even know, 30, 40 years, maybe even longer. My mom was a secretary, came from her office supplies. Okay. So let's just see. I'll do the I'll do the reinforcements off camera, but let's just see what we have here that maybe I could use. Oh, I could probably use I'm sure I could use the same paper, but since the entire set goes together and I already folded this one. I think I'll just cut some out of here. And that way I can fold it and make sure I get a um, nice circle there. Um, I'll go in and get the design. So I just, I double this. And what you can do, of course I don't have one here. What you can do is take a little reinforcer. Make sure you have enough space. Draw a little circle. That way you know you have enough space. I might have went too deep there. <laughs> Probably I did. Yes, I did. So let's just go down a little bit. But sometimes you cut too, you punch too close to the edge and then you don't have enough space to complete your circle, if that makes sense. There, got two. One for the front and one for the back. So I guess, I guess this kind of is a Semi circle punch project. I could have just cut something out with my one and a half inch punch. Okay, that's enough for me to decorate a couple here for you. I like this one, and I like this one because they're extra busy. So, and I think the reinforcement also makes 
makes it look like a retro luggage tag. So I think that's kind of important. And then by the way, my string was nine inches in case you want to know that as well. I'm, I almost always make my own reinforcers, except these ones are sticker, and I just colored them. So there we go. Isn't that cute? You can sit there and make these all day, and you have a nice little collection of ephemera out of a 12 by 12. This one's a little off, but I'm going to use it anyway. A little off center is what I mean. It's not that hard to get them centered once you start. Of course you could buy a reinforcement die set if you want them perfect. And, and also they have um, different shapes which are cute. So if you wanted to invest in that that's an option if you didn't know about those. Okay, let me get situated here. I'll do the rest of those reinforcements off camera. Find a nice somewhere I have that piece I just cut. Oh well, I have a piece of white paper here. Get these nicely arranged for you. Here's my digital set. Here's the ones we did today. And here are the first ones. I love. So again that string was nine inches. I think it's kind of the perfect length. Okay everyone, there we go. Little set of luggage tags or coin collector tags, whichever you prefer. I hope you find that helpful, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for your time, everyone. You have a great week. Bye.